Thanks so much for joining Rudy and me. We really appreciate the fact that you all uh, take time out of your day to listen to us. And Rudy, I sure appreciate your hospitality. It's great doing this with you. It's great. It, and it's been it's wonderful. Fun. It's fun. So we're in chapter uh, four, and we're looking at Jesus's. This is the start of Jesus's ministry. So we finally, all preparation, here we go. Verse 12, when Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew to Galilee. He left Nazareth and made his home in Capernaum by the sea in the territory of Zebulun and Naphtali. I'm sure Rudy's got a better pronunciation. So that what had been spoken by the prophet <coughs> Isaiah might be fulfilled. Land of Zebulun, land of Naphtali. On the road by the sea across the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. And those who sat in the region of the shadow of death, the light has dawned. From that time, Jesus began to proclaim, repent for the kingdom of heaven has come near. Talk to us about these cities and the fact that the light has dawned, Rudy. Pronounce them correctly. Zebulon is correct. Naphtali. There, thank you. Uh, I'll never get it right. I'm too old. Uh, is, the, is the other yes. child of Jacob. Uh, the way of the sea beyond the Jordan, uh, Galilee of the of the Gentiles. So right. basically, this is a mixed area. Uh, there's a lot of still because this is in northern is northern Israel, Samaria. Uh, there's still a lot of what happened a thousand seven hundred years prior when the king of Assyria transplanted a bunch of. Uh, people from close to the Black Sea right. into this area of the right. country. But what Isaiah is saying here is, is that the, the people dwell in darkness have seen a great light. And that's ultimately he saw the shimmering of the Messiah in this dream that he had of Naphtali. But he also knows that this is very close to a valley where a lot of battles had gone on right. and the shadow of death. Right. Uh, so that's how the shadow of death gets kind of connected here. And then, then we have Jesus right. after his baptism saying this, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand, right. is here now. Right. Because he is here. Correct. Let me, let me, a couple points, and I'm going to spend a lot of time on verse 17. Uh, the people, when I read, the people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. Those who sat in the region of the shadow of death, the light has gone. I turn that into a prayer for people that I care about. So a lot of my emphasis has been on Western independence for a long time, and there's a that is an area, as our whole world is, where there's a level of darkness. God, may your light shine. Amen. May they see your light. May they respond to your light. You can pray that for over anything that you are concerned about. Let's turn to verse 17. So Jesus proclaimed, repent, talk about in a minute, the kingdom of heaven. A couple of days ago, I want to say this again. This is not talking about heaven. This is another way of talking about the kingdom of God. Uh, Matthew was a very good Jew who did not want to just introduce the name God into every sentence. So he substituted heaven for God. Kingdom of heaven is the same thing as kingdom of God. It means the rule of God. Now, I mentioned a couple of days ago, I spent a, a lot of time reading through some pretty serious books on what is the kingdom of God. And I think the best definition is to look at what Jesus does in the Gospel of Matthew. So if you will follow along with us and you see Jesus, his attitudes, his actions, and his teachings, attitudes, actions, and teachings, you'll get an idea of what is the kingdom of God. How can Rudy and Bob and people who listen to us live in the kingdom of God? If we do, as Dallas Willard talks about, if we try to live a Jesus kind of life, we will be living in the kingdom of God. That's, that's it. So it's not going to heaven when you die. Thank God we get to do that. 
the kingdom of God is living like the greatest man who ever walked on the face of the earth. <coughs> Let me cough a minute. I'm, I'm going to get over this cold between now and next week, I hope. To come near, the kingdom of God has come near or the kingdom of God has arrived. I'm going to give you a little bit of technical theology here. The kingdom of God has come. The kingdom of God is coming. The kingdom of God will come. Okay? So it was a past event when Jesus walked on the earth. It is a present reality now, but it is going to reach a culmination in at the end time. You good for that? Yeah, I, you know, one of the ways that I think about it, I because in Jewish thought, we're always kind of waiting to receive our inheritance. Yeah. And really, uh, Jesus is the culmination of the prophets right. because uh, this is the Messiah. Jews don't see him as a divine individual, but they see him as a, right. as a, the way we talk about Jesus is a Jewish way of basically talking about somebody that was going to be like Moses. Right. That being said, at, at Pentecost, which is on the anniversary of the giving of the Ten Commandments, the Holy Spirit fell. And what I see the Holy Spirit being in kind of my Jewish right. uh, interpretation is, it's the down payment of my inheritance. Yeah, good. And of which, when his foot touches the earth, he lays the table for our inheritance. You got it. Hallelujah. Amen. Mark chapter 1. Jesus says, the kingdom of God's hand is at hand. Repent and believe the gospel. I like what Mark says because we have to trust this is true. We have to believe the gospel's good news. We have to believe the good news that we can live a Jesus kind of life and that living a Jesus kind of life is the best life there is. You know, we think that good news is a New Testament word, gospel. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, from chapter 40 to chapter 52, I believe, Isaiah, yeah. it's mentioned three Absolutely. times. Absolutely. And when they say that, that is a hint to go back and read what the good news is all about yeah. that was prophesied 600 years before this happened, of which somebody's telling you something in the future that is actually happening proves that he's standing outside of time. Yeah, nice. Hallelujah. Nice. Yeah. 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 Before, we, <clears throat> before we push stop on the button, I want to use the word repentance again. Penance is, is fine. Feeling sorry is fine. Confessing our sins is fine. All that's good. But repentance is giving all we know of ourselves to all we know about God. And it is something we do every day. So it's a, it's a total commitment. And uh, you will not cheat yourself if you give a total commitment to your life to the Lord. You will do nothing but bless yourself if you pursue living a Jesus kind of life. You know, also in Hebrew, the word for repentance is teshuva. Yes, sir. And teshuva is, is like, you, you basically stop your walking away and do an about face yes, and face God. The people dwelling in darkness have seen a great light. And you only, that only happens when you stop walking away and you face the Lord. Uh, good word. Thank you. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, so much for Rudy and folks that listen to us. And thank you most of all for your great thank plan you, and gift of salvation. Lord, help us to live in it fully. Lord, help us to pursue with all our hearts living a help Jesus kind of life. We pray for that, and we thank you. Amen. Hey, Amen. thank you all so much for joining us today. This is so much fun for us, and we hope it's good for you. God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow.